Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and today we're going to do a do-it-yourself HF antenna, the random length infid. Now I've just assembled some parts here that we're going to use to construct our antenna. We're going to go ahead and make our radiator out of uh, WD-1A wire, which you can use any kind of hookup wire or whatever. I just happen to have a bunch of this laying around. This is a 9 to 1 un un which is a unbalanced unbalanced impedance transformer you get these on ebay i think i paid like fifteen dollars for this one here i have twenty five feet of feed line this is just some parachute quarter cordage to support your antenna this is just a piece of pvc this is what i make my antenna insulators out of just uh... pvc or something of that nature instead of spending money on buying them and in this box here is a isolation transformer. Okay, you can see our antenna installed here. We got our 9 to 1 un un. We have our 25 foot of feed line. And we ended up with like 80 feet of radiator. It's running down to my camper tree there. What you'll notice is, is that in this antenna, in this configuration, your feed line shield actually becomes part of your antenna and actually radiates RF. And because I didn't want RF going back inside of my shack. What I've done is I've made an isolation transformer. And all this isolation transformer is is just a toroid and 12 turns of RG58 around it. Now what this does is, is this takes and attenuates the flow of RF from the feed line and, and limits the amount of RF that will be on this feed line once it goes into my shack. Now in a QRP situation this isn't entirely necessary. But for a situation where you're running 100 watts, this is a good idea. Let's look at the performance of our random length wire on this antenna analyzer here. And you can see this is starting at the, the 160 meter band and ending at the 10 meter band over here. And you can see the match kind of, you know, typical up and down, up and down. But you can see that with a tuner, it's usable across an entire range of frequencies. This is my trap vertical. It's a high gain 14 AVQ that's over a field of resonant radials. I just put it back together again. So I need to go out there and shorten and lengthen it between the traps in order to bring it into resonance. But you can see here that it has very little use or very little performance outside of its design frequencies. Now within its design, the 40 meter band, the 20 meter band, the 15 meter band, and the 10 meter band, you can see the performance is quite good. But outside of that, you can see that your performance is less than desirable. Now, performance wise, at this time, we can go ahead and look at the spectrum scope here. And we can see what our signals are like right now. Let me turn that down. I know it's annoying, but this is actually a good way to uh, test it and it's it, this is not a scientific test but we can see that our signals right now where they're at and this is on the wire now when we go to the vertical you can see 
how much our signals have increased. So that's a strength in having the tuned antenna that's actually in the ground and over a resonant radial field. Okay, this is a 30 meter band here, and we'll go ahead and demonstrate. This is the wire, and you can see how strong our signal is. And you can see how much it drops off now when we go to the vertical, which is outside of the vertical's design frequency. So for $50 in parts, you can have something that performs like this across a wide range of spectrum that you can actually pack up and put in a small bag and take with you and set up just about anywhere. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.